Hey friends, today is about notch EQ. Um, this is a technique that I believe can make your mixes sound exponentially better if it's used properly and sparingly. Um, let's go ahead and drag an EQ8 onto this drum track, and this is what the drum track sounds like, okay? The This is actually, I know it looks like it's stereo, but this is just a bounce down of a mono room mic on a drum set. Um, and just with one microphone, drums can start to get all out of sorts with extra harmonics. And so what we're going to do, the process of notch EQing, is finding specific frequencies or, or specific ranges of frequencies that we either like or dislike and uh, removing or adding them to the mix. Um, and what's really great about EQ8 is if you hit this little headphone icon, what will happen then is any EQ the EQ band that you click on, depending upon how wide the uh, the Q setting is, it will solo out that band. So let's go ahead and listen to what that sounds like. I'm going to click on two here. Now when I click on it, nothing happens because I haven't boosted or cut anything, okay? But as I start to boost or as I start to cut, you'll hear that frequency range get louder and quieter. This is specifically designed for this notch EQing technique. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to listen to the drum set and figure out areas of the drum set that are irking me. So let's listen again. And, and I, I really recommend that you do these mixing lessons with headphones or with uh, in a quiet environment with uh, your speakers turned up just so that we can listen to detail. So let's listen to this. So what I'm hearing is a couple different things. I'm hearing a lot of extra frequencies in the in the kick drum. It's it's very w round and huge sounding. Now maybe that's something that you want, but in this case, I'd like the kick drum to have a little bit of a little bit less of the uh, upper ranges of its 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 kick, so that the the bass instrument can come through a little bit. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to listen to this and I'm going to try to find that frequency range that I don't want. So. And so as you can see, yeah, right there around 100, there's, there's just a bunch of extra information that I don't really think is necessary to my mix. So I'm going to turn that down a little bit. And that's the range I want to get rid of. And now as you can see, as I've let go of that, it's kind of pulled that out, okay? Might be a little bit wide, that's okay. And now the other thing that I'm hearing is that there's a lot of pressure in what sounds to me like the three or four K range, let's let's find out. I'm gonna get another uh, band going, and I'm gonna really really dial in that Q, okay, to try to really find where that frequency is. As you go up the frequency spectrum, your your resonant frequencies, these 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 errant frequencies that we're looking for, are going to get smaller and smaller in range, okay. So I'm I already know that my Q needs to go up a little bit when I'm when I'm working in this range. So let's go ahead and play it. Now I think that the immediate idea is like, ooh, all that kind of drives me nuts. Well, that's because it's a big, that's a big cut or boost or whatever. And remember, cutting and boosting does the same exact thing when you are, are clicking on this headphone thing, right? It's gonna turn it up as you get away from zero, okay? So I'm gonna slide up until it really hits me. There it is. That's one of those ranges that was really bothering me, okay? So I'm gonna take that out. All right, now I'm gonna click on four, but notice that four is a shelving EQ. You notice this little symbol here? We want it to look like this. We want it to be a uh, a bell curve EQ, okay? So now that I have this bell curve, I'm gonna turn the Q up, and I'm gonna try to find another one of those frequencies. There's another one right next, to, right next door. Okay, so I'm gonna let go, and now I've got both of those frequencies taken out. Okay, now, I know that some of you might be being like, whoa, man, that's like a negative 12 dB cut there. Yes, it is extreme, but the reason I'm doing this is so that you can really hear the difference that, that, that's being caused here, okay? So, as with any effect that we ever do, I'm gonna turn this band off, as with any effect that we ever use, we always want to gain match. What that means is that I've cut a, a, a pretty solid amount of, of dB out of this 
track. When I turn the EQ off, it's going to get a little bit louder. And so you might assume that that is going to be an improvement of sound. But what you really want to do is, is the reason that this gain control exists right here is so that you can turn this back up and truly A, B compare between what the EQ is doing to your track and, and what it sounds like with it off. You want it to be about the same volume so you can make an educated uh, and, and uh, enlightened decision as to whether you should use this effect or not. So here's what the drum set sounded like before. Okay, there's those errant frequencies flying around. I'm gonna turn the EQ on. And notice that it sounds just a little bit cleaner, a little bit easier to listen to, a little bit softer on the ears, okay? Now you can really hear it when I turn it back on. Those frequencies just jump out at you, those, those rough, those rough resonant sounds. Okay, so now I'm going to move on to the guitar track for this for this tune, and let's go ahead and listen to that. Don't need that tuner there. Drag an EQA on it. Let's just listen. The most important part of all this is listening. Really listen for, like, EQing should be a deliberate action. It's all about listening. So what I hear right now is kind of a resonant frequency. Uh, it's probably the sound hole of the guitar, uh, kind of uh, wumping out, if you will. So I'm going to click on this, uh, uh, this band right here, number two. I'm going to turn the cue up just a little bit, hit my headphone thing on, and I'm going to try to find that frequency. Yep, there it is. I knew I heard it. So, let go. Wow. The the difference just that made was was huge. And maybe that's all you need to do. But another thing that you can use Notch EQ for is 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 a, just a little broadband boost and you can you can also use it to kind of listen to ra maybe a full range that you'd want to that you'd want to boost. And in this case, I feel like there could be just a little bit more top end on the on the guitar. So I'm going to find out where would that be pleasing. <clears throat> and I'm going to use band four and I'm going to turn it into a bell curve. Okay. And I'm just going to listen to what ranges sound pleasing to my ears to boost. See, if I, if I boost this area, I get a lot of that pick action. There I get some of those high harmonic notes. That adds a little bit of that nice mid-range. But I think I just want to get some of that pick action. Just a little bit. Okay. So, now that I've, I've added a little bit, I imagine that this EQ is not going to change the gain too much. But it did. <laughs> so I'm going to have to add maybe about a dB. So now I can truly AB these, these, these two uh, with the EQ on with the EQ off. Man, the difference that one little band cut makes is, is just huge. Okay, so then we're going to move on to the synth track. Sounds like this. Tell you what, let's do this a different way. We're going to listen to this synth track along with the guitar. So something I'm noticing is that first note, the is kind of the same note that the guitar root note is hitting. So I kind of want to find that note. And what's nice about these synth tracks is that they're a synthesizer in general is going to make a little bit more controlled uh, resonant peaks and 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 uh, resonant frequencies because it's just it's programmed to do so. So when we look at this with an EQ8, we can really start to see where those harmonics are. You can see how much more controlled that is. And to me, that might be encroaching a little bit on my on my uh, guitar track. So what I can do is leaving the guitar track on, I can turn the headphone on for the EQ8 and still listen to the guitar while I'm trying to find that frequency. That actually 
actually I'm going to turn the, the cue up just a little bit so that I can get a little bit more narrow of a, of a band. Okay, so I'm just going to remove that area. And see how that kind of opens up that mid-range of the guitar? Okay, so that is going to need just a little bit of gain, probably about a dB. Let's listen to the before and after. Now here's another thing to think about. When I'm adding gain with my EQ, another way that you could think about this is that I'm actually adding a dB to all the other frequencies beside this range, and this range is actually only being cut by, you know, uh, 4 dB instead of 5. I, that might be hard to, to think about, but when you're adding gain, but you're cutting something, you're kind of shifting the whole thing up a little bit. So as I turn this on and off, In fact, let's take a look at this, just, just to, to further this, this idea for you. Look at the VU meter. Even with the decibel added, that subtraction of gain right there really, really backs this thing up. So right now we're, we're hovering up here, and when I turn this on, look how much less there is. Especially in the RMS levels, which is this uh, the, the, the brighter green. Off. It's almost a, a total, even with a, a decibel of gain introduced back into this track, there is almost a 2 dB loss. But to my ears, because there's a brighter signal happening now that this has changed, um, to my ears it sounds about the same level. And that, in and, in and of itself, is a really important concept to think about. The brighter something is, the louder it is to you in, 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 in the way that humans hear. So. I don't really need to add any more gain, even though I'm, I'm having less. And, and so what, what that's going to do is it's going to translate at, in the very end as I mix this track down into a louder mix, okay? Um, so let's go and listen to the bass and see if there's anything we want to do to it. I think the bass is pretty good, but let's listen. Yeah, you know, I think the bass is going to be just fine. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to play all of these tracks together without the EQs on, okay? And, and a way that I like to A-B stuff is I like to use the key mapper and just go into each one of these tracks and map the on-off switch to Q, my Q key. And that way, if I hit Q, it will turn on and off all the EQs that I have in this entire mix, okay? So I can A-B the entire thing. So here's with all the EQs off. <laughs> Turn the EQs on. Off. Okay, so just notice those tiny little changes, just the smallest little changes, really, really, really help the mix. Now, of course, there'd be more EQ that I would do, but what all that I'm doing in this case is removing and adding frequencies that in specific bands that I really want to hear or that I really want out of there. And that's what notch EQing can do for you. In Maybe in the small scope, in each one of these little tracks, it doesn't seem like a big change, but by the time you've got 60 tracks running and you have layers on layers on layers, it makes the biggest difference ever to go in there and find those frequencies that are irritating to the ear, get those out of there, and find those frequencies that you really need and get them back in there using this little headphone icon right here and the, the notch filter on EQ8. So I hope you enjoyed this video, and I hope that you use this tactic uh, profusely. <laughs> uh, thanks for watching, everybody. Like, comment, subscribe. Uh, I'll see you next time. Thanks.